and is scheduled to be launched in the late 2030. However, when I looked for up, yeah, that could be what will happen on Starship's fifth test flight as the gigantic Super Heavy engages in an impressive catch for the first time. So, to gear up for that important milestone, the first sign of a big upgrade on the orbital launch tower appeared and immediately entered the camera lens. Find out everything in today's episode of TechMap. I'm pretty confident we will achieve that this year. This announcement was unveiled by SpaceX's CEO Elon Musk in an April 4 presentation of the company. It was accompanied by a simulated video of the mystical return process of the Super Heavy booster as you saw. SpaceX could attempt to land a Starship booster as soon as the vehicle's fifth flight as Elon Musk outlined plans to increase both the flight rate and the performance of the launch vehicle. The idea of a dedicated structure for catching Super Heavy was revealed four years ago. We're going to try to catch the Super Heavy booster with a launch tower arm using the grid fins to take the load he tweeted. By then, the Mechazilla launch tower was just a render but caught the public's attention so much. All of us have been curious about when this innovation will do its maiden task. Until now, Mechazilla has been performing very well in some of its functions such as lifting, grabbing, and stacking Starship's two stages. It is currently in preparation for the extremely major milestone in its lifetime, catching Starship. While the orbital launch tower in Cape Canaveral will launch the first humans to Mars, OLIT and Starbase will catch the first booster returning to Earth. On April 12, the camera recorded the activities in OLM and Starbase, of course, with the first sign of a large hydraulic actuator on a chopstick. In particular, after working on the chopsticks for a few days, the left arm actuator has been removed for an unknown reason. The replacement then happened as the new actuator was lifted and installed. The hydraulic actuator is used to move the chopstick arms, so for the renewal this time, many people expect that it will help the chopsticks to move faster. Another hypothesis aims to prevent bursting hoses inside the system due to overpressure. Then, the plumping was changed while the piston remained intact. It makes sense for a giant structure like Mechazilla, which is used to lift a thousand-ton object like Starship. As you know, SpaceX's Mechazilla is a hydraulic robot used for handling rocket components during the production and testing processes. A hydraulic actuator is a mechanical device that uses hydraulic pressure to convert energy into motion. A hydraulic actuator, as far as I know, might work as follows. Pump. A hydraulic pump generates the necessary pressure by forcing the hydraulic fluid through the plumping into the system. The hydraulic fluid in this context uses a specialized fluid, usually oil, to transmit force. Cylinder. The hydraulic actuator typically consists of a cylinder filled with hydraulic fluid. Inside the cylinder, there is a piston that separates the cylinder into two chambers. Control valve is used to control the flow of hydraulic fluid into or out of the chambers, thus the position of the piston can be controlled. When pressure is applied to one side of the piston, it moves, which in turn moves the connected mechanical part, like the chopstick gripper, in addition to the improvement on OLIT, the Starship itself also has to get higher reliability in the upcoming test flights. Musk said SpaceX wants to bring the Super Heavy booster back intact on the May flight, having it land on essentially a virtual tower in the Gulf of Mexico. That would allow the company to proceed with an attempt to bring the booster back to Starbase for a landing on the following flight. Musk said he was optimistic that SpaceX would be able this year to land a booster back on the tower using a pair of giant arms dubbed Mechazilla to cradle the booster. The odds of us actually being able to catch the booster with the Mechazilla arms this year, he said, is probably 80 to 90 percent. As for the Stage 2 Starship, reusing it will take longer. SpaceX will need to achieve at least two consecutive successful landings at a specific point in the ocean before attempting to bring it back to the launch site to avoid creating excessive debris. It can be said that the successful landing of Starship especially Super Heavy on Flight 4, is neatly compulsory because of too much schedule risk to the whole program. Most notably, their Starship Lunar Lander, Starship HLS, is required to be human-rated to carry crew to land on the moon in 2026 under Artemis 3. But, in advance, Starship must get ready and master some difficult technical needed for Artemis-like in-orbit refueling. For that reason, all attention now is focusing on Super Heavy's first catch in Flight 5, which is more complex than you think. You may know, the standard Starship's first stage is 71 meters tall 
and has a dry mass of 200 tons. This super large object requires a firm launch tower and its three strong mobile arms to catch and hold it in midair. Things start to become more intense at this point. For a super heavy catch, the vehicle will approach the tower, enter the gap between the splayed arms, hover in place while the arms close around it, and eventually come to rest on hard points that appear to offer about as much surface area as a coffee table. Based on a simulation of the process shown by Elon Musk, calling it a catch is a misnomer, as the arms will mainly move in one dimension, open slash close, and can't actually grab the rocket in any real sense. As built and shown, they are closer to a tiny fixed landing platform capable of minor last second positional adjustments. Eventually, the chopsticks could shave a small amount of time off of post-recovery processing, removing the need for a crane or the same arms to attach to a landed booster or ship. They could also shave off the dry mass required for landing legs, though all interplanetary ships will still need legs. However, they will also inherently make proving their own efficacy a nightmare. By all appearances, the current recovery mechanisms on the arms and the landing hardpoints on ships and boosters mean that a catch could fail if either stage is more than a foot or two from a perfect bullseye or rotated a few degrees in the wrong direction. With the method SpaceX has devised, even the tiniest error could easily end with a massive pressurized, partially fueled rocket destroying the chopsticks and plummeting a few hundred feet to the ground, guaranteeing an explosion that could damage surrounding infrastructure or start fires that might. In the event of larger anomalies during a landing attempt, Starship could accidentally impact the launch tower, damaging or even outright destroying the skyscraper-sized structure. Musk also permitted that it doesn't hit the tower. Yeah, exactly. And especially not that launch ring, which is really difficult to make that launch ring is very complicated. He said, ultimately, the immense risk posed by any catch attempt means that unless SpaceX has miraculously gotten the design of everything involved nearly perfect on its first try, the company will have to be extraordinarily cautious and expend a large number of ships and boosters to avoid rendering its only Starship launch tower unusable. Regardless, SpaceX specializes in converting things from impossible to too late. SpaceX is not shy of challenges and is pressing ahead with a myriad of achievements at breakneck speed. The speed at which SpaceX has moved from concept to reality has barely given time to other commercial players to assess the impact SpaceX will have on their business plans, let alone react to them. The good news is that we won't have to wait much longer to see these phenomena happen. If Flight 5's landing succeeds, SpaceX will much more confidently conduct its next ambition. God bless them. At the International Aeronautics Conference in Baku on October 2023, SpaceX's CEO Elon Musk revealed when would the Mechazilla catch returning super heavy boosters and starships for the first time. We would catch the booster in the next year or maybe less than a year. And then hopefully, uh, if, if we get lucky, we might catch the ship towards the end of next year. And where does the catch take place? Is it Willie Mays in the middle of the outfield over his shoulder or is it Florida somewhere? Uh, no, it, so the, 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 both the booster and the ship come back to the launch site. Okay, fantastic. There are many things to discuss here. Most notably, let's discuss Elon's timeline. When will Mechazilla conduct its first catch? The end of next year or late 2024, as Elon said. Fast forward to early this year, SpaceX's president, Gwynny Shotwell, also emphasized that 2024 would be the year that SpaceX focuses on Starship safety landing. But is it feasible? Their first step is a successful landing without Mechazilla in Flight 4. It explains why the upcoming flight should not have a payload aboard, allowing the company to focus on the urgent goal. The success of Flight 4 is very important because it will be straightforward to the next phase, catching both stages by the giant and most advanced structure, Mechazilla, this year. Um, I'd love to get Starship uh, into orbit, deploying satellites and recovered, both stages fully recovered, um, with a rapid turnaround on those stages as well. In addition to Flight 4's outcome, Another factor that decides the accurate timeline is the completion of the new structure of the launch complex. After three Starship rocket launches, SpaceX might be somewhat aware of what the current OLM design's disadvantages are. As a result, since March, 
we have witnessed the gradual removal of the OLM legs at LC-39A. The launch site, which had been sitting for almost a year with no activity, has had four of its six legs, which were to support the orbital launch mount, removed for unknown reasons. The legs that were to hold the orbital launch mount, which is more or less finished, were put up before SpaceX conducted the first flight of Starship in Texas. And when they found what happens when 33 Raptor engines fire at the ground with no water suppression system, the drastic design change raises doubt about the redesign of OLM serving for catching Starship this year. As mentioned, Elon also does not abandon the possibility of testing the Mechazilla in Florida. If the original design at Pad A took about a year to complete, this new design will take less time given SpaceX's current experience. It could be that SpaceX is going to incorporate a flame trench because water jackets aren't enough to protect the OLM from damage and the flame torch still wears the surface beneath slightly every launch. Additionally, the deluge plates made of steel tend to erode more easily and quickly. One given solution is shifting to tungsten. Could we make it? According to my wise audience who is also our best friend Kevin, tungsten is a lot harder to work with. It is very expensive. It is more than 10 times more expensive per pound than steel. Or another clever audience with the nickname Ken Smith, Tungsten would also require a stronger foundation, as tungsten plates would more than double the weight of the launch pad. Obviously, steel is still the best option. By the way, through this video, I also want to send my most sincere thanks to the audiences who have always loved and supported us in the past time, especially Kevin Bissett and Mo of the North. All of you always make my day. Okay, let's come back to our topic right now. Beyond that, we would imagine a new OLM design. Someone shared that, the same launch table but with new legs and an inbuilt high-pressure water-based suppression system, in addition to a rebuild of the already installed manifolds to accommodate the inclusion of the very successful jet floor deluge at Starbase. Despite the hundreds of tons of water per second we've seen, it's still not enough to suppress the massive sonic shock reverb of 33 engines. SLS uses 550,000 gallons a minute to choke the solid rocket booster's sonic violence. And I would imagine that Starship being more powerful but less violent would probably need the same. The current six legs may be replaced with three new legs, meaning the launch mount might just need three legs to adapt to the new design of the launch table. This is probably because recent Starship flights have shown the SpaceX team the benefits of tripod design and the shortcomings of the current structure. Thus, researching and redrawing design drawings should be a compulsory requirement. In case SpaceX makes design changes, the original pads in Starbase will follow too. And everything will start at Pad B in advance, which is under construction. On the other hand, some speculation suggests that this is simply a matter of removing excess padding. SpaceX began stacking the tower in June 2022 and finished in January 2023 with the attachment of the chopsticks meant to lift super heavy boosters and starships for integration before launch. They built the LC-39 a pad in a hurry, which may have been due to questions about whether the EPA and FWS would ever approve the starship pad at Boca Chica. Once it became clear that approval was going to happen at Starbase, the LC-39A pad became redundant. Of course, the plan at some point is to build a pad there but focusing their efforts on getting OM-1 and 2 up and running makes sense until Starship is operational. It now seems like Starship is where Falcon 9 was when it was first launched. It could take off, but can't land. This workhorse vehicle nailed its first ever test flight on June 4, 2010. At 2.45 p.m. local time, the rocket blasted off from the coastal launch pad at Cape Canaveral Air Force Station in Florida. It reached an orbit 155 miles above Earth. Five years later, or on December 21, 2015, after two previous attempts, SpaceX successfully landed the first stage of its orbital class Falcon 9 rocket back on Earth for the first time. The historic landing is the first time a rocket has launched a payload into orbit and then returned safely. It's safe to say that, instead of taking five years to launch a payload and land successfully as Falcon 9, Starship now can cut down the time much if everything goes to plan. This helps the Starship project quickly reach the break-even point and even the monopoly as well. While building competition in the medium to heavy launch market seems to be the theme of 2024, 
Companies that can't find money elsewhere could be in trouble for never being sustainable. SpaceX's grip on the market isn't slipping and with revenue coming elsewhere, a few competitors probably won't slow them down from being able to one-up everyone with Starship. Because let's be honest, everyone is attempting to catch up to SpaceX's Falcon 9 and heavy rockets. Yet, Starship is probably one or two more launches away from coming online commercially. While some will stick to smaller rockets, for various reasons, if Starship can truly cut launch costs to a fraction of what they used to be, new rockets coming out today to compete with the Falcons will be looked on as obsolete in just a few years. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. If you want to explore more aspects of the world's most powerful rockets and the world of rockets in general, here is a selection of deeper dive videos for you. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.